Hi everyone, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Stepan here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to make an introduction to the Petrov defense or the Petrov's defense or the Russian game, as it's also known in uh, ex-Soviet and ex-socialist countries, Croatia being one of them. Uh, a defense which makes a lot of sense, sort of, and it intrigued me to study it further and further. I have to say, and I think it's... Uh, one of the mysteries of uh, responses to E4 and one of the defenses which needs to be explored more, which is proven by Fabiano Caruana, who has been playing it uh, in recent years with great success. Now, uh, talking about the Petrov, first let me show you the opening moves. E4, E5, uh, the most classical response by White, uh, with which uh, White indirectly... Uh, chooses not to fight indirectly for the center, but fight for the center immediately with the most logical move. And uh, the movie 5 is similar to, to c5, controlling the d4 square, and basically the movie 5 stops the move d4. And the implications of the movie 5 in modern theory uh, mean that uh, the player who plays e5 either knows nothing or knows everything. And I'm of the opinion that e5 is only played by the weakest and by the strongest players successfully, that is. Uh, of course, everybody can play it. And after the move knight to f3, which is white's by far most common continuation, uh, black's most common continuation is the move knight to c6. And after knight to c6, you have the Roy Lopez, uh, you have the Italian, you have the Scotch, and uh, there are tons of theory. There is, uh, according to my calculation, more than 400 hours of work for you to only grasp the basics after knight to c6. And basically you are uh, putting your game in white's hands and... Uh, of course, black can decide on several variations. However, white is the one who chooses what he will play here. And there are so many variations stemming from knight to c6 that it's almost uh, impossible to learn all of them. And it's definitely very hard to learn the, all of them quickly. Uh, now we come to the sidelines. And uh, there are two more moves after knight to c3. Uh, black can play the Philidor the move d6, which we are going to cover uh, in the last series uh, in e4 openings. And black can also play the Petrov defense or the Russian game with knight to f6. Now, the most beautiful thing about the Petrov is that you avoid so many theoretical lines and so much theory that uh, the learning curve is uh, so much simpler and uh, it will, well, I won't say it's easy to learn the Petrov, but it will take you probably... 50 times less than to learn knight to c6. That's the best thing. Uh, the second best thing is that uh, the Petrov is irritating for e4 players. And I myself being an e4 player, when somebody plays knight to f6, I want to throw up. Uh, not really throw up, but I get frustrated because I know that, that there's only one really aggressive variation which I can play. And I know that black has a lot of drawing options and that black has a lot of... Uh, peaceful lines he can enter often involving a queen exchange. So e4 being uh, the most aggressive first move, of course, e4 players tend to be much more aggressive than d4 players and e4, the king's pawn opening, often leading to more aggressive games than the queen's pawn opening, is meant to be an open game, is meant to be aggressive, is meant to be tactical. Now, the pattern of defense is one of the few uh, defenses for black which neglects, uh, neglects white uh, that luxury and basically doesn't give white the option to play as aggressive as he, as he would like to. So that's the second thing. I think that the Petrov defense is uh, the best choice for taming aggressive players and playing against stronger opponents. And this is exactly the reason why I started studying the Petrov and why I... Uh, Included it in my repertoire. I didn't play it in a tournament game yet, but I think I will very soon. So, okay, uh, let's talk about the opening. After knight to f3, white is attacking the e5 pawn. That much is clear. With the classical response knight c6, black simply defends. And then uh, most of the vari variations are going to revolve around weakening the e5 pawn. Uh, in particular, the royal Lopez with bishop to b5, which weakens uh, the, the e5 pawn indirectly, threatening to take the knight in some variations. Uh, knight to f6, on the other hand, uh, creates black threat. And uh, instead of defending, it attacks the e4 pawn. So if you take my pawn, I'm going to take your pawn. That's, that's basically what, what black is saying. It's not as simple as that, but it's a counterattack. 
Uh, we are going to look at uh, five different variations. There is going to be uh, there are going to be five videos in the series uh, covering the variations in detail, and this one is only going to be an introduction to make sure I can uh, try and explain the basics of the opening and the main ideas for both sides. Uh, after knight to f6, uh, white has three ways to respond, three good ways to respond. There are some sidelines like bishop to c4, but I wouldn't want to spend too much time on them, uh, and uh, I don't consider them as good, and neither does chess theory. <clears throat> First of all, let me uh, just highlight two players and uh, one author. Uh, the two players I would like to mention are Arthur Yusupov and Fabiano Caruana. And the author is Arthur Yusupov. He wrote a book which is about 400 pages long, going in great depth, in great detail about every single variation. And if you go through the whole book, I think that your understanding of the Petrov is going to be immense. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm working on it weekly. And uh, it's a great book. He, he has a great... Uh, writing style and he might be a bit dry every now and then but uh, but yeah he, he gets the job done and his work with Mark Dvoretsky is excellent as well which proves that he's a great author so okay uh, the first thing I would uh, advise you to do is take uh, 10 or 20 games uh, played by Fabiano Caruana and Artur Yusupov uh, maybe Fabiano, Fabiano Caruana should be your first choice and uh, study them, see the ideas and see what uh, what the consequences of the Petrov are. One thing I would like to mention is that once you play the move knight to f6, you have to be aware that uh, the opening is a draw for black with perfect play. Uh, I don't mean to say that the engines are going to draw every game, but uh, strong players will. Uh, in the databases, there have been uh, 14,000 games with the most common move, which is white taking the pawn. And out of the 14,000, white won 27%, 61% of the games were drawn. And you can calculate uh, what little percentage uh, black managed to win. Uh, with the second most popular move, uh, d4, uh, white won 33% of the games and 54% uh, of the games were drawn. With the third most popular move, knight to c3, uh, 2600 games were played, 33% of the games were won by white, 49% were draws, 18% were won by black. So definitely not a very aggressive opening for black and not an opening you want to play if you want to go for the win, which might be confusing. Fabiano Caruana is the uh, second in the world, uh, perhaps not anymore, but he is close definitely and he fought for the world championship. So how can you explain him going for a draw? Well, it's not a draw unless your opponent plays perfectly and Fabiano Caruana knows his theory very well, knows the uh, openings, no opening ideas and the middle game plans, so he often wins with it. Okay. Now let's look at the most common variations. As I said, we are going to uh, go in great detail uh, into every single one in separate videos. Here I would just like to provide an introduction. Let me just say that uh, the Petrov defense was called after, named after Alexander Petrov, who is a Russian player from the mid-19th century. And uh, basically the, the Western world calls it the Petrov defense, the Russian world and the ex-socialist world calls it the Russian game because uh, it, it was a Russian defense or the Russian defense. In Croatia, it's called Ruska Obrana, which is Russian defense. Okay, uh, after knight to f6, white has three main options. Uh, let's look at knight to c3 first. Knight to c3 is the so-called three knights game. Uh, the most popular move by black here, which I wouldn't recommend, is the move knight to c6, which enters the four knights. The four knights can be entered... Uh, from some other openings, you don't have to play uh, two knight to f6. And uh, there is a ton of theory here, which isn't really the Russian game or the Petrov. Uh, after the move d4, uh, you have the four knights uh, scotch variations. So we are going to be covering that in the scotch uh, in the scotch defense. So I wouldn't want to go into the move knight to c6 too much. I wouldn't recommend this move. After knight to c3, if you want to play the three knights, uh, the three knights game in the Russian or in the Petrov defense, I would recommend the move bishop to b4. And we are going to go over this variation. It's very interesting, and I think that most players with white pieces who play knight to c3 uh, are going to be expecting knight to c6 and a peaceful symmetrical game. However, after bishop to b4, uh, the variations after knight takes e5, castles, bishop to e2, bishop takes c3, dc3, d6, knight d3, knight e4, castles, 
at least what you get with the black pieces is a healthy imbalance in which you gave white the bishop pair, but you have a, uh, a better pawn structure. White, of course, has doubled pawns along the c-file, which means that any endgame is going to be, in theory, slightly better for you. And the bishops aren't really as powerful because the dark squared bishop doesn't have that much scope and it doesn't have too many squares to go to. You can imagine it going to g5 or to, or to f4 or to e3, but none of these squares are really that strong. So after knight to c3 uh, by, by white, the three knights game, I think that black has great chances with the move bishop to b4 creating an imbalance. Once again, if you go for the four knights, then you really can count on a peaceful game and uh, on a symmetrical position, which is with best play going to end in a draw. Uh, the third move, the second move, I'm sorry, I wanted to look at uh, is uh, d4. And uh, d4 is the modern attack. Uh, or the modern uh, Petrov, and d4 might be uh, one of the most aggressive ways for white to play, but I still don't find it uh, as good uh, as good for white as the main lines. After d4, knight takes e4, taking the pawn. You can play uh, knight to e5, which isn't considered that good. After knight takes e4, bishop to d3 is the main move. And after d5, defending the knight, knight takes e5, knight to d7, knight takes d7, bishop d7, castles, bishop to d6. You now have uh, the classical Petrov structure. And uh, yeah, uh, it's symmetrical. It's, I want to call it boring, but uh, it would be unfair to call it boring. Uh, if white captures, which white isn't going to do, then you have an imbalance and you have the bishop pair, but you can't really hope for that variation. What you have is uh, the typical uh, Petrov center with the pawns on d5 and pawns on d4, and this is the structure you are going to have most often in the classical and in the modern. And it's really hard to do much here, and uh, this resembles uh, the exchange French and, and openings like that, which have a symmetrical pawn structure, and unless the player's castle on opposite sides, then it's really uh, going to be hard to create uh, too many attacking chances. So I think that the move d4 uh, doesn't really give white that much. That's why knight c3 and d4, in my opinion, should be avoided by white, and I never play them, I, I play the main line. So after knight to f3, knight to f6, the main move, of course, since black didn't defend the pawn, is take the pawn. So this is what we are going to be focusing focusing on the most. And we are going to be looking at three different variations, the classical, the Nimtsovich, and the Lasker attack, or the Kozio. And all three are quite interesting. All three are more aggressive than knight to c3 or d4 or on, on, move, uh, on move three. So knight takes e5. And uh, this is by far the most popular response, and it's by far the most principled response. Let me just get one thing out of the way. Uh, there is one variation which uh, I, I wouldn't recommend, and that's knight takes e4. This is da the Damiano variation, which uh, for a long time has been considered losing for, for black. I think it's worse. I don't think it's losing. And uh, you, I can conclude that uh, the worst case scenario, if black plays well, is you give up a pawn and... Uh, you have some compensation. Still, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, White's most principled response is queen to e2, of course, attacking the knight. And now note that there are traps which you could fall into. For example, if black plays knight to f6 here, seemingly saving his knight, then the move knight to c6 check wins the queen. And there are traps you could fall into. So after queen to e2, another move which is bad is d5. And after d3, queen e7, d4, uh, queen e5, e d5, bishop d6. Once again, white is a pawn up and white is going to trade the queens off. So white is simply better. Uh, the best response after knight takes c4, queen to e2 is queen to e7. However, after queen takes c4, d6, d4, d takes c5, d takes c5, knight c6, you have once again given, given up a pawn. White is a central pawn up. Uh, it is an overextended e5 pawn, but still it's going to be really hard to recapture it. Let's say bishop b5, pinning the knight indirectly, protect, protecting e5. Bishop d7, renewing the threat, knight c3. Now you could go for this, uh, uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, for taking the pawn with uh, with black, but black is considered worse. Slightly, wor slightly worse, but still, uh, but still worse. So after the move knight to e5, uh, I would recommend that you don't go for knight takes e4, uh, the Damiano variation, because it really isn't uh, 
really isn't that playable for black and you're basically accepting a worse position or being a pawn down whatever happens so after knight takes c5 i want to look at uh i want to look at three different moves uh after knight takes c5, uh, there are several uh, options for white. Yeah, okay. Uh, the move you should play is d6, chasing the knight away. And now uh, there are several options for white. Uh, knight to f3 is one of them. That's the classical variation, let's say. After knight takes c4, d4, this is the classical variation or the classical attack. And after knight to f3 knight takes e4 there are two more moves which white could play and where the variation branches out and those moves are knight to c3 and queen to e2 and these i find fairly interesting so just let's go over the opening moves once again so e4 e5 knight to f3 knight to f6 i would recommend knight e5 uh, for white because it's the most principal response d6 i would recommend as the only move for black so d6. Uh, white should retreat the knight. There isn't really much else to do. There is one variation with knight to c4, which is called the Paulsen attack. But I find it really strange because the knight ends up on, on e3 and I, I think it's disrupting the, the development. So I really wouldn't recommend it. So after d6, white simply retreats the knight to f3. And now uh, you have to recapture your pawn. Uh, well, you don't have to recapture your pawn. There has been one game played with knight c6 and one game played with queen to e7. Both were won by white, so recapturing the pawn is almost mandatory. So knight takes uh, e4. And now uh, three variations. Okay, uh, d4 is the classical. And after d4, d5, you once again have the thematic uh, pattern of center. Okay, with the pawns on d4 and d5. Uh, c3 and c6 uh, aren't that common because the moves aren't really necessary. It's much more common for white to play the move c4 and accept an isolated central pawn if black wishes to do so. It's not the best move here, but let's say c4 takes, bishop takes. Uh, in many positions, white is going to have an isolated queen's pawn, which is going to be perfectly playable because white has still has all the pieces on the board and uh, has a chance for attack. The main move, however, is bishop to d3, uh, knight to c6, castles, bishop to e7, c4 now, and black doesn't take, of course, knight b4 is played, attacking the bishop, bishop to e2, castles, this is just one of the variations, this is, this is called the Chigorin variation, or the main line, uh, and I think it's playable for both sides, however, I don't see too many prospects uh, for a deadly attack, uh, unfortunately. Okay, uh, so this would be the classical attack or the classical variation. After knight takes c4, there are two much more interesting moves, in my opinion. And uh, first I'm going to go over the Cosio, and then I'm going to go over knight c3, which is my favorite variation. So the Cosio or the Lascar attack is queen to e2. Queen to e2 has been played uh, by Magnus Carlsen against Caruana. In fact, I want to show you that game right now. Okay, uh, okay e4, e5. Uh, Caruana is black here. Knight f3, knight f6, knight takes e5, d6, knight f3, knight e4, queen e2. Now, of course, you have to defend your knight. Uh, there has been one tremendous uh, defeat by uh, Vichy Anand. Here, he played bishop to, f, uh, to f5 and just lost the game immediately after d3 because there's no way to save your knight. So if Vichy Anand could do it, you should know that it's a mistake that could happen and you should, and you should avoid it. So after queen e2, the main move is queen to e7 d3 attacking the knight, knight f6, knight c3, queen e2, bishop e2. And uh, the problem for white here in the Cosio is that black can, as you could see here, trade off the queens. The second problem is that material is completely equal, the structure is completely symmetrical, which on the highest level means it's a draw, and on lower levels uh, means still anything could happen, of course, but the chances of, of an equal position are huge. Okay, in the game, uh, Fabiano Caruana went for the plan with g6, which I like. I do think it's weakening the dark squares, obviously. Uh, there are no more pawns on the dark squares on the king side, so it's kind of risky, but it worked for him. a6, stopping knight to b5, bishop f4, bishop g7. And it's a normal position when the, with the queens off, in which uh, Fabiano Caruana even accepted a structural weakness with the doubled c pawns, but it was still enough to draw. And you can see that there aren't too many chances here. 
Okay, let's go back to the theory. After queen to e2, uh, queen to e7, as I said, is the only move. d3, knight to f6 is the only move. Bishop g5 is the best move here. Uh, and after queen takes e2, bishop takes e2, bishop to e7, we have this position with the symmetrical structure. After knight c3, uh, the move which Fabiano Caruana didn't play in the game we just looked at is c6, which is the most popular move, which is basically restricting the knight from entering d4 and from entering b4. And after c6, uh, there is one way for white to play which I find interesting, and that's for white to castle queenside. If white castles queenside, uh, the engine, first of all, will tell you that it's completely equal, but I think that there are some chances here. So, regarding the Cosio, even though after knight takes e4, queen e2 might seem visually like the most aggressive move, I really uh, think that, I mean, you're basically accepting a trade of queens, which with white pieces in an e4 opening, nah, I, I wouldn't recommend you do. <clears throat> so, okay, for the last variation, I want to flip the board, because it's my favorite with white pieces against the Petrov, and that's the move knight to c3. Knight to c3 is a provocative move, and knight to c3 is saying, I'm not going to let you draw, I'm not going to let you have a peaceful game, and whatever happens, we are going to have a fight, which is a great statement against the Petrov, because... Petrov players, I'm not going to say they are cowards or scared to play open positions, but they probably pre prefer positional play, equal positions, or positions with the queens traded off. So knight to c3 is definitely a statement. Now the most obvious move is knight takes, ruining the pawn structure, and that's the only move black should play. Retreating the knight to f6 would just give white a tempo, and after knight to f6, white can develop the bishop freely, be up in development. So after knight c3, take on c3. White should always recapture with the d-pawn, opening up the bishop, d takes c3. And the point of knight to c3, the Nimtsovich attack, is bishop to d3, queen to d2, castles queenside going for an attack. There are ways for black to, find, to fight against that, but this is, in my opinion, uh, the best way to create an imbalance and to create an attacking position. Note that you are accepting a worse structure, of course, and in any endgame, black is going to have an advantage. Not a big advantage, but still an advantage because your pawn structure is ruined. But your goal here is not to trade off the pieces, not to enter an endgame and to crush black before an endgame happens. Bishop e7, bishop e3, castles, queen d2. Uh, here there's an annoying move uh, for, for black. Knight d7 is the main move. But after queen to d2, white can be stubborn and play bishop to e6, not allowing you to castle. And there's a very interesting variation here, which I'm excited to cover in the detailed video, but let's just say that it isn't wise to take the pawn. So uh, in this structure, let's return to the main move, knight to d7, castles, knight e5, h4. You can see that white is even now accepting to have double isolated f pawns on f2 and f3, an isolated pawn on h4, and white is going all in for an attack, not really caring about the consequences which might be costly in an endgame. So the Nimtsovic attack is definitely, uh, in my opinion at least, the, the best way to fight the Petrov or the Russian game. Okay, uh, so these are the five variations that we are going to go uh, uh, over in detail in separate videos. I'm going to start with the main lines after knight takes e5, the classical Danimcovic and the Kozio. After that we are going to go over the three knights game and the modern attack. And I hope that uh, the series will uh, give you another weapon in your repertoire against e4 and it definitely uh, can be an easy weapon to add to your repertoire because it's really hard for white to avoid that. White can avoid it with two bishop c4, the bishop opening, but more often than not, in 99% of the games, white is going to play knight to f3. So there aren't too many sidelines you have to learn if uh, you're afraid that white is going to avoid the Petrov. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something from this video. Uh, thank you very much for the kind comments and the support. And uh, stay tuned for more chess. Please let me know what you think about the Petrov. And see you soon. Bye-bye.